Hi, I'm Roger, a gadget guy, and I want to help you get the best out of your home electronics and entertainment stuff. Now, unlike the people at Samsung and Apple, I don't want to encourage you to go on out and get the latest and greatest new equipment every couple of years. Now, a TV probably lasts around 20 years, and you can keep them up to date with add-on boxes like this Roku or a Chromecast or a Fire TV. So you can watch all the latest digital programming on the TV you already have. And then by using simple adapters and cables, you can connect them to any hi-fi system. And a hi-fi system will last 50 years. And the good old hi-fi systems still sound as good as they ever did. What I'd like to be able to do is help you get more joy out of the stuff you already have. Now take this TV, for example. I saw it on a curbside looking all sad and lonely, kind of like a Charlie Brown TV. It had a sign on it that said free. So I brought it home and started using it in my basement. And now it's helping me with my YouTube videos. Now this is part three of a four part video series. In part one, I showed you how to connect up a modern smart TV to any audio system. And today I'm going to do the same for an older TV like this one. Now the connections I show you today are going to be very reliable. They're very dependable, never failed me yet. But if you don't get it to work first time, then I'll cover troubleshooting in part four, in the part four video. Today, we're going to talk about optical connections. If you have an optical connector on your TV, and most TVs do, then it's usually the best method for connecting up an audio system because it just works with the minimum fuss and bother. Now, it turns out this TV was made in 2011 and it still works perfectly. Now, it'd be even more enjoyable with better sound. And it has an optical connector on the back, so it can be connected to any soundbar, a receiver, or any stereo system come to that. Now, the first thing you have to do is to find the distinctively shaped and clearly marked optical connector on the back of the TV. And then you just simply plug in the optical cable, one that's long enough to reach your audio gear. This is the optical connector on the back panel of a soundbar. Now I edited out all the cussing because this is so deeply recessed back in that corner that I couldn't get the cable in with my fat fingers. So nobody is going to judge you if you put a little bit of duct tape on the connector to make it easier to hold. And that plugs right in like that and just clicks home. There, simple. Okay, we have the TV and the soundbar powered up. Before we test it, we have to turn the TV speakers off because if we have both the soundbar and the TV speakers running, it sounds a little bit echoey. So let me go to the TV menus and on some TVs it's audio, on some TVs it's sound. And we go down, we find out where it says TV speakers. Ah, oh, there we go. TV speakers, it's on. We turn it to off and then get out of there. Okay, let's try some YouTube. In this case, we use the remote control for the soundbar and the volume control works and the mute works. Now to get around the problem of having multiple remotes, I have programmed up this system with a single universal remote. These are quite inexpensive. Um, and remotes in general is going to be a subject for another video. So this is a great system and very inexpensive, great sound. What if you want better sound than you can get with the soundbar? Or maybe you already have a stereo or surround sound system that you want to use. Well, connecting a receiver that has an optical socket is just as easy as connecting a soundbar. In this case, on this receiver, there is a little cover that has to be removed and maybe discarded. It's little, got a little knob on it. And then you simply plug the connector in like this and it snaps in place. This receiver doesn't have 
an optical input labeled TV. So I'm going to plug it into the one labeled VCR because who's still using a VCR these days anyway? Now one really great solution for TV sound is a pair of powered speakers like these. Now these are capable of true hi-fi sound and they really don't take up much space because you don't need a separate receiver or amplifier. Now many models come with their own remote controls and many models come with an optical connector for easy hookup to a TV. Now the manufacturer of these offers them with an optical connector, but I bought the version without before I realized what a great idea it would have been. But in the spirit of using what you got, I'm gonna show you how to hook these up as an example of a stereo system that has its own remote control, but does not have an optical connector. This is the right adapter to use. If you have an audio system that has no optical connection, but does have a remote control volume. Now this adapter also works for the very, very rare TV that has a coaxial connection. I've only seen one of these, but it connects up exactly the same way as an optical connection, except to use an RCA cable. So the adapter has a little switch to switch between the coaxial and optical. And for our purposes and for 99% of the TVs out there, probably 99.9% .9 of the TVs out there, this needs to be in the optical position. And you connect this up by plugging the power in here. The other end of the power is a standard USB connector. This can plug into the TV, or if you don't have an open socket, USB socket on your TV, uh, this goes into a standard phone charging block. And the optical cable plugs in here, like that. And the audio cables go in the other side, white to white and red to red. Now this is all ready to connect to the TV. Now at the TV end, you just plug the USB cable in here only goes in one way there we go and we plug the optical cable in there simple and to connect up the powered speakers we just take the audio cable that was plugged into the adapter and we plug the rca connectors in red to red and white to white and that's it we're good to go okay so now we got this system powered up let's see what it sounds like Well, I gotta say that the sound is excellent. Um, I, I think this is quite a step up actually from the soundbar that we tried earlier. And the price on a pair of powered speakers like this is about the same as the soundbar. So yeah, this is a, this is a great option. If you wanna connect up something that didn't come with its own remote control, like this vintage stereo that I showed you in the part one video, all these computer speakers, then I have a different kind of adapter to show you. The optical signal from a TV is a fixed level. It doesn't have any kind of volume control on it. And the previous adapter I showed you was also fixed and you had to control the volume using the sound systems remote. Well, the old stereo and the computer speakers don't have their own remote. So this particular adapter comes with its own remote control. And there's an on off buttons at the top, mute volume controls, and then the selector for the two inputs. And we're gonna be using the one marked Toslink here because Toslink is another name for an optical connection. Now this adapter connects up exactly the same way as the previous one. Uh, we put the USB power in here, like that. The other end, of course, is just the same as the other one. It can connect to the TV or to a phone charger block. The optical cable plugs in here, like that. Easy connection. And because we're using computer speakers, we won't be using these two RCA jacks. 
Uh, computer speakers usually come with a headphone plug, a three and a half millimeter headphone plug. So that plugs into this input here. If we'd used the old receiver, we'd be using those RCA plugs, just like before. And the TV end of the optical connector connects up exactly the same way as for the other adapter. Okay, let's see how these computer speakers sound. I'll be using the remote control that came with the adapter. And it's all working, great. So now you know how to connect up to a TV, computer speakers, or any other stereo that didn't come with a volume control and still have control over the volume and mute from your couch. The last kind of connection we're gonna talk about is the straightforward audio connection where you stick one end of these RCA cables into your TV and the other end into your stereo. Now, I can hear a lot of you saying, well, if it's really that simple, why didn't we just start with that? Why do we bother with all that digital claptrap and all the adapters and all that kind of stuff? Well, firstly, not every TV has that kind of connector. Of those that do, some of them, it's a variable output that varies with the volume control. And some of them, it's a fixed output that you can't control by the volume control. And so you don't always get a volume control out of this, or you might end up with two volume controls, which causes a lot of confusion. Now, the last reason I recommend using either HDMI arc or optical even if you have to use an adapter versus just running a cable directly from the TV, is that those straight audio outputs from a TV are usually an afterthought. And the sound quality sometimes leaves a lot to be desired. So I am going to turn the TV on. And the digital outputs, HDMI arc and optical, are completely silent if you do this. And the sound quality is much higher, even if you have to use an adapter. This will be somewhat masked if the TV volume is up loud. So if you don't have a digital output, then this makes a reasonable alternative. But if you do have optical or HDMI arc, it's a much better way to go. If you've watched this video and parts one and two of this video series, then you know how to connect any TV to any kind of audio system. All the solutions that I've shown you give you full remote control of your volume and mute, regardless of the video source that you're using, whether it's an Apple TV, a DVD player, a cable or satellite box, or even the antenna or internal apps on a smart TV. In video four, I'm gonna cover more TV sound troubleshooting topics. If you like this video and found it helpful, then please give me a thumbs up. If you want to get notified of future videos on this channel, then please click on subscribe. And if you need to buy any of the equipment or cables that I showed you today, you can go to the description section and click on more, and there you'll see links to the products that I showed you. If you click on those links and buy through those links, it won't cost you any more, but it will help to support this channel and I'll be able to buy more gadgets that I can test and help you get the best out of. That's all I had for today. Thanks for watching.